Are you tired of constantly fighting urges and repressing your own sexual desires? I'm sure you are because as a coach, this is the number one problem that I see men struggling with. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you what I teach some of my private clients inside of Recovery Blueprint. Now stick with me to the end of this video because I'm going to be giving you perfect clarity on the actionable ways to stop making your recovery a battle, stop fighting these urges, and make this whole process easy. Let's dive in. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'm Coach Josh, founder of Purpose Over Pleasure, and it is my purpose to help men quit paying for sex workers so they can live a more fulfilling life and enjoy the intimate relationships that they deserve. Now, before we dive into my presentation, I just wanna make a deal with you as a viewer. Since you are obviously committed to change in overcoming this addiction, I am so confident that this video is going to help you do that and actually solve some of your problems in your recovery. That if I actually deliver on this promise, I highly encourage you to, after this video, check out the Recovery Blueprint program, which is the only program on the market that helps men overcome their addiction to sex workers. And more information will be down in the link below. Let's dive in. All right, so here's how to stop fighting these urges and fighting against your own body and have this whole process become easy because most guys have no clue how to actually handle urges. They make three common mistakes that I'll be showing you. And honestly, people just don't know what to do. They don't know where to start within their own recovery process. And it shows up in the way that they deal with these urges. Most guys just have no clue. So I'm gonna give you perfect clarity on what most guys do, the common mistakes that I see as a coach, and I'll be showing you what I teach and how to actually make this process so much easier and be able to overcome urges without using willpower, without fighting against your own body and oppressing your own sexuality. But first, let's dive into the mistakes. So the first mistake people make is that they ignore the urge altogether. And the reason why they do this is because they want to avoid the internal conflict that's going on. And I don't blame them because that internal conflict is painful. It's a painful experience because you're fighting against your own body. You know, you're going to war with yourself and most people don't find that a fun thing to do. And they rather avoid that and give in to their urges and just see where that takes them, you know, see what happens rather than actually face the music and, and try to fight against their own body. And this is also common for most guys who are either fighting or repressing for too long. Like they've been using this willpower for such a long time that eventually they just don't have that willpower in them anymore. Or they're like, I've been dealing with urges for the past month and I've been fighting and fighting. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I just want to get rid of this, right? And they go and act out. So that's what happens when people ignore. There's really no resistance in that entire process. And it's like they've given up. It's like they're just hopeless about the entire situation. And all it is is to avoid the pain of actually fighting and repressing. So let's dive into what fighting is. When you're fighting against an urge, that's when that internal conflict is present. So you're saying like, oh, I shouldn't do this. You know, it doesn't make sense. It's wrong. I shouldn't spend my money on this. Um, you know, it's a bad thing to do. I'm going to feel bad after. They're giving themselves a list of reasons why they shouldn't do it. And then right after they do that, they're going to have another part of them that's saying, oh, you should do this because you're undersexed. You know, it's going to be a good experience. You, you deserve this, actually. You're so stressed out right now. You, you need this. And there's just two sides of this war that's happening internally. And it's a long drawn out process and it takes forever to resolve. And honestly, when it's so long and drawn out, it, it's worse than actually just saying, yep, I'm gonna go and act out. You know, I'm gonna go see that escort. Instead, when they fight, it's a, like a three hour process. It starts with, oh, I shouldn't do this. And then, oh, I might just go cruise around on the internet a little bit. I might go look at some websites. And that goes on for some time. They fall into this trance. They're, they're knowing their heart of hearts that they shouldn't be doing this. They feel bad doing it. And, you know, eventually they go and, and drive to the bank and get some cash. Or they go and text some people just to find their whereabouts and meet up. It's a long, painful experience. And the entire time there's an internal conflict. And it sucks. And there's so much reliance on willpower when you're fighting. Um, and I'm going to be honest. Sometimes this works. 
fighting these urges off with willpower does work until it doesn't. You know, I, I've seen in one of my clients, um, he's a very ambitious and driven person. Like if you were to take a look at his life in general, he proves that he has self-control, he has discipline. Um, he has, you know, the ability to use willpower in situations when he needs to in other areas of his life. And he took that directly into his recovery. So he would go like a month or two months clean without seeing, you know, any escorts or going to any massage parlors. But the entire time he was fighting against himself so hard. Like he used every bit of willpower possible to try to prevent him from acting out. And the times that he did act out, it was just a long drawn out process and extremely painful and not sustainable. It was not sustainable because inevitably, like there would become a time where that willpower wasn't there, where you just said, fuck it, I can't take this anymore and would go and act out. So that's the problem with constantly relying on just fighting against yourself and trying to use willpower when handling these urges because while it can work, it's just simply not sustainable. And that's why you see guys go for like extended periods of time in between their acting out behaviors because they're fighting and they're relying on willpower. So like I said, when you're fighting, it's a long drawn out process, very painful using too much willpower, not sustainable. Number three, there's people who repress those urges. And what I mean by that is they shame themselves for even getting that urge in the first place. They said like, really right now, I can't believe I'm getting this urge. Or like, I'm such a freak for thinking like this, right? I, again, am I really wanting to do this again? And they're just repressing that whole thing. Like, no, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. They're just putting it down and putting themselves down in the process. Oftentimes you might see these guys who are repressing in denial about being ur getting urges. So they might just try to not think that it's going on and, and try to distract themselves when they get an urge. And they know that there's something going on inside of them internally, but they're choosing not to deal with it and deny it because they want to avoid that internal conflict that's going on. So none of these work, you know, they're not sustainable and it leads people to go and act out. And even if you do stay clean using some of these methods, it's going to take so much willpower, so much effort on your end, and it's going to drain you as an individual just to stay clean. Like one of my clients did, like he, he would stay clean, but the cost was so immense that inevitably he would do it again because he just couldn't take it anymore. Now, what is the solution to all of this? Because if this is the common mistakes, how can we fix this? Well, I'm gonna give you a proper framework over here on what you should do when you're getting an urge. And if you use this process step-by-step, step, not only is it gonna get easier and easier and easier over time to handle these urges, but it's gonna be done in a way where you're not using willpower, you're not repressing a side of you that wants to go and act out, you're not repressing your own sexuality in any way, and you're not using willpower and fighting against your own body. You're doing it in a way that actually resolves that internal conflict altogether. So you can avoid that pain that a lot of people have been trying to escape while also staying clean. So let's dive in. The first step to all of this is just being honest that you're getting an urge and acknowledge it. It's as simple as that. The first step is just to not ignore it, basically. And once you do that, once you say, okay, I'm getting an urge and they're like, okay, let's Let's deal with this now, right? We can move into step two, which is to recenter. Because typically what happens to guys is when they get a real tough urge and it's really emotionally driven, one of two things happen. They either one, they start to work themselves up. They're like, oh, it's it's going on. And they get filled with anxiety and you know they're they're getting nervous and they're fueled off that energy. And it's real dark, right? If that's you, if that's the type of person you are when you really get the surge and you're like, okay, something's really happening here, you need to calm yourself down. You know, most people on this side try to use logic and they try to fight against themselves. Like, oh, I shouldn't do this. It's wrong. It's bad or whatever. And when you do that, you're just giving into that emotionally driven urge and making it worse. Like if you're fighting against that temptation, you're not resolving it. So when that happens, you feel yourself working up and having a physical response, you need to calm yourself down. Just 
just an emotion. Just calm yourself down. Fight fire with fire. Instead of having this purely logical driven response where you're saying, oh, it's bad, it's wrong. How can I even think this way? All these things. Instead of going down that route and fighting your emotions with you know, logic, fight that emotional response of the urge with just an emotional response of calming yourself down in the process. Fight fire with fire. And if you can simply calm yourself down, you're regaining control. You're not spiraling out and, and being in this chaotic state. It's cool. And on the flip side, this is something that I've been seeing a lot lately and really thinking about um, as I looked back on my own journey and some of the clients uh, that I've been serving recently. So sometimes with people who have been acting out for an extended period of time, like they've been going and doing these things for years and years and years, or it's very frequent, um, they've probably gotten used to that anxiety, like and getting all tense and stuff. They've gotten used to that. Instead, now when they get a real difficult urge, they feel numb, right? They're, they're not, you know, getting like worked up. Instead, they're working down and it's like this dull, dark energy that starts to you know take control of them and it's due to them just being numb and we also want to recenter that we don't want to get into that state where you're just unresponsive and numb we don't like that we want to get you back to baseline so if you feel that way it's the exact same thing just <sighs> calm down get back in control okay so once you do that, and once you come from this framework, instead of fighting against yourself, but instead just realigning yourself and calming yourself down, you can come at it from a way that you're not fighting against your own body. You're not tensing up and going to war with yourself. You're staying calm, cool, collected, and staying in control. Now, once you can do those two things, and these are very important steps, by the way, most people don't do this. You can finally, with a clear head, go into phase three, which is to find the why. Why did you get that urge? Like, what's going on? What motivated you to get this urge and want to go and act out? You know, I've, I've spoken with people and I'd, I'd ask them that question, like, why do you think you got that urge? And they're like, oh, I was just horny. I'm like, no, there's probably something deeper than that. And after doing some digging, there always was. Maybe they were super bored and they wanted to escape that boredom and they wanted to go and act out. Maybe they were super stressed out at work and that was... A catalyst for them to go and act out maybe they felt undersexed or there was some relationship issues going on and that was a catalyst for going to act out obviously they feel you know horny obviously they know that there's going to be some sexual gratification at the end of the tunnel but in that moment what propelled them to go and act out wasn't you know their own urges it was probably a pain agent it was probably a trigger it was something like that and if you can understand that why you are now gaining some data, very, very important data on your addictive cycle. What motivates you to go and act out, right? And if you can find that data, you can move into the fourth step, which is using that data and leveraging it to either find a compromise or to de-escalate the entire situation altogether. And I'll give you an example of this. So let's say I get an urge, right? I'm gonna walk through all these steps. I want to acknowledge it, be like, okay, this is going on, right? Just face it, basically. Recenter myself. So instead of feeling numb, <sighs> regaining control. Instead of feeling anxious, nice deep breath, right? Going to the third phase, which is finding the why. You know, in this example, I'm just going to be stressed out from work, and I just want to find an escape from that. And I've been, I've been grinding for the past couple weeks, and I, I want to find a reward for myself. So that's my why, that's, that's what I found out. That was what propelled me to want to go and act out. And with that information, I'm going to find a compromise and then I'll de-escalate it. So I don't want to go and act out. What I really want is to find escape from all of the stress. And I really want to reward myself for doing all of this hard work that I've been doing in the past two weeks. And if that's the case, I just need a little bit of a, a more healthier escape. What my body really wants isn't for me to go out and see, you know, an escort or go to a massage parlor. What my body really wants is to get that escape that it wants. And since that's the case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go enjoy a nice meal. You know, I'm going to go and just take a nice break. You know, I don't have to be 
uh, filling my plate with all this work and all this stress. I'm just going to take a little bit of time and relax and unwind, get some good food, maybe watch a movie and just get back at it the next day, right? Boom, there's your compromise. And you can do that with literally anything. With boredom, it's like, I don't wanna go and act out what I really want is to just find an escape from this boredom. You know, I just want to be able to make good use of my time. That's what my body is really searching for, not for that sexual outlet. And since that's the case, I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm gonna go do something productive. I'm gonna work on my side hustle. I'm gonna do literally anything else that's gonna find, you know, good use of your time. You can do that with any pain agent out there. You just have to be real honest about really what's going on. And the great thing about this is not only are you solving the big problem of fighting against your own body and, and fighting this urge, but you're actually giving your body what it actually wants in this situation. It's a win-win. And that's how you resolve that internal conflict that's going on between one part of you wanting to go and act out because it gets a need met and another part of you wanting to stay clean because that's what you know you should do. It's a win-win and resolves both parties. Now, you can also de-escalate the entire situation, kind of given that self-talk that I've shared with you. So this isn't what I really want. What I really want is this. And if that's the case, I'm just gonna go do that, right? It's pretty simple. And that just gives you so much leverage over your own recovery because you're actually solving the problem that's present. You know, over here, you're not actually solving the problem. You're amplifying it. You're, you're giving into it. You're giving it power by doing these things. And that's something that you want to avoid. So I hope this helps. Now, if you got value out of this video and you have newfound clarity on how to overcome these urges without using willpower or fighting or repressing your own sexual desires, and you're looking to finally break this addiction once and for all, here's what I advise. Go down to the link below and check out the Recovery Blueprint program, which is the only recovery program on the market that is specifically designed for guys like you who are struggling with paying for sex. This program is helping men finally break the chains and achieve long-term freedom that they can sustain and finally just stop this addiction that has been hurting them for so, so long. So they can start to live a more fulfilling life and be able to enjoy the intimate relationships that they deserve and just be the man they want to be without living this shady double life. And if this sounds like something that you want in your life, I highly encourage you to go down to the link below and book a call with me to see if you're a good fit for this program and potentially get you enrolled on that call. So, so with that said, see y'all boys in the next one. Stay safe, stay strong. Let's do this.